this your reflection of the over 20,000 women who marched to the union buildings against past laws on this day? Let me start by congratulating Auntie Sophie Dubrain, who is still alive and still very active, both in the African National Congress, but also very active generally in talking about the Women's March. You can imagine how old she was at the time. I think she was one among the youngest women who stormed into the union building with all the petitions that the women had signed to go and demand that women should not carry uh, uh, the pass because the pass law was being extended uh, to women. I think the time was very difficult for them because imagine organizing 20,000 women to come from across the country, the logistics of ar arranging that, the transportation, um, the supporting of all those women. But I guess the women made it possible for themselves because they were committed. They did not have to wait for somebody to be arranging for them. If you think that these women came from all corners of South Africa, I think that uh, the women's organizations that existed at the time were mobilizing women. And it was ch quite, I think it must have been very challenging even to walk up to the union building. I'm hoping that a lot of women, especially young women, can be given the opportunity or be organized to go and see the union building and see the, the words that have been, that are on the steps of the union building relating to the women's struggle and especially um, the imbogodo that you see at the entrance of the union building that indicates that imbogodo were the women who were grinding apartheid away to make sure that Later on, we have what we have today, a free, democratic, non-racial, and non-sexist South Africa. We're not where we're supposed to be. Uh, I think uh, women and men must not lose sight of the fact that they need to continue uh, to support uh, women's struggles. Men and women are supposed to work together to make sure that on a day like this, we don't have women crying because of gender-based violence. If you look at um, uh, women in parliament today, and I'm talking about women across the board, because when we talk about women's struggles, I know that the African National Congress, as an organization in particular, has always fought for the mobilization of women in general. If we go back to pre-1994, during the negotiations process, it was the Women's League um, that mobilized other women into a formation which was called the Women's Coalition. The Women's Coalition's task was to mobilize women to make sure that while the negotiations are taking place, issues that are related to women are not left out. So women like Nkosaza uh, Nadlamini Zuma, like Nosif Wema Pisa Ngagula, Yobale Gambete, and many other women who were not necessarily in the ANC Women's League, uh, were part and parcel of marching to Kempton Park to go and demand that women be part and parcel of the negotiations process. Now those women are still alive. Those women are still very active. Those women are imparting their skills, their commitment, their way of struggle. They are imparting that to the next younger generation. I am one of those women that are really, I can say that it was the likes of uh, Balegambete, the likes of Lindy Wesisudu, the likes of um, Masha Ope, who is also still alive, who used to be the president of the Women's League, who actually gave us the breast milk from them. And it is our op chance and our opportunity to do exactly the same with the next generation. I do feel though that um, with the youth today and the next generation, there is a gap that is existing that we need to close as women and, and women in my generation, for instance, I feel like during the liberation struggle, we were much more closer with each other as women. And immediately after 
uh, the negotiations and the new uh, dispensation of 1994 were still very much uh, together but now I feel there's a little bit of a gap and I do understand why it is because now there's freedom now people are experiencing a new environment of democracy where people have can see and feel their rights being implemented unlike during our time our time was a time of apartheid that uh, imposed triple oppression to women. You were a black, you were a worker, and you were just a wife, if I may say so. Uh, you are just a woman in some rural area and nobody cared except for the people around you. And today, I see that young women are scientists, young women are pilots, young women are engineers, young women are teachers. So you can see that the space is being opened up for them because there is a constitution, number one, there's legislation, number two, that covers them, but there's also freedom that enables them. However, I still do believe that for women to really carry all women along, we still need to be united as women to fight uh, poverty, unemployment, inequality, but most importantly, to fight gender-based violence. On this day, I would like to say to women, our struggle has not ended. Our struggle continues. As long as there's poverty, as long as there's unemployment, as long as there's inequality, but most of all, as long as women are suffering from gender-based violence, as long as women sometimes even in the workplace where they are, their salaries and pay is not equal for the same job, I think the most important message is to say to women, don't sit on your laurels and think that I can say today we have engineers, today we have this and that. Don't sit on your laurels because whether we like it or not, patriarchy is still everywhere. Patriarchy is still in control. Men, unfortunately, not all of them, but unfortunately for us, the majority of men in South Africa still believe that when you are a woman, your space must just be in the kitchen, your place must be in the kitchen. Even when you wake up in the morning at the same time to go and do the same job and come back, you are still expected to cook, to wash, to clean and do all those things without support. We need to be able as women collectively to say to our men folk, we are here together. We are building communities together. We are building families together. Let us share the responsibilities of family. Let us share the responsibilities of community development. Let us share responsibility of empowering women. It is beautiful. It is just exciting to see men who respect their women, men who understand that you cannot just come home and throw your shoes anywhere, throw your underwears anywhere, and think that somebody is going to follow you and pick up those things. It is a, a, a pleasure to be in a family where you have both men and women working together. I mean, if you have young boys at home, that's another message that I would like to pass uh, to our communities, to our families. Don't allow young boys in the home not to take responsibility on the chores because how do you allow them not to do so and then expect them at a later stage of their lives to do that? They are already used. They think that the sisters in the home must be the one, the mother in the home must be the one that does that. Things must change. Society is moving very fast and I want to also pass the message to the men who have woken up to this reality that together we can create better families, together we can create better communities, together we can love, we can live and be tolerant of each other. Lastly, it's about the LGBTQIA community. I think that we have accepted already in our society and in our community that there are people who need to be protected. They need to be protected at home. The legislation, the regulation, and everything cannot protect them unless they are protected at home, unless they are protected by communities. This country of ours needs both men and women to build to the next level.